the last few months have just brought home to all of us how possible it is nowadays to to live and, and to work uh, online and just how much technology has advanced to enable us uh, to do that but as anyone who's had to make a payment uh, from one country to another will have noticed the same is not true at all for cross-border payments it could take up to 10 days uh, for a payment to get through it can cost 10 times as much as it would for a domestic payment and for businesses six out of ten cross-border payments from one business to another require some form of of uh, manual uh, intervention. So, so why have the arrangements for cross-border payments just lagged so far behind um, developments in other areas of our lives? Well, it's a complex problem. Making a cross-border payment involves a network of banking systems uh, in different countries uh, communicating with each other. Very often those systems are only open for a limited period of time each day and those, those periods don't overlap. Payment between two countries can involve five or six different banks. Each one will, will charge a fee and the payment can break down uh, at each stage. And in some cases, the technology, the messaging formats that are being used go back 100 years uh, to the development of the telex machine. You just can't carry enough information for the payments to go through. It's not just a technical problem. Different countries have different standards, different regulations. Anti-money laundering checks, which are very necessary to ensure that the financial system is not abused often have to be done multiple times in each jurisdiction sometimes that alone can take over two weeks and it does matter cross-border payments globally were worth about 20 trillion dollars uh, last year uh, for businesses just the hassle and cost of uh, the cross-border payment systems discourage many small businesses from trying to access customers in different markets uh, and to grow and take advantage of a global marketplace and some of the costs actually fall on the shoulders uh, of the poorest migrant workers in, in uh, advanced economies, sending money back uh, to home developing countries. Remittance flows, flows from workers to developing countries, are now worth about three times uh, as much as global development aid. So reducing the cost, increasing the speed uh, would really make a difference. And that's why the G20 group of countries has made improving cross-border payment systems uh, a priority, and why the committee on payments and market infrastructures, a committee of the major central banks has today produced a report just setting out how it needs to be done and how we need to tackle all of the angles of this complex problem. And the report sets out a program of 19 building blocks to build uh, a better system. These cover uh, securing a joint commitment to a, to a new improved cross-border payment system uh, from both the public and the private sectors, coordinating better on our regulation uh, and standards, improving our technology, uh, improving harmonization uh, of data, uh, and actually also exploring some of the exciting new technologies like uh, central bank digital currencies, global stablecoin, new payment platforms, which while not yet uh, possible, uh, may well give us other ways to improve the system. It's a big task, uh, but if the G20 agrees it at its meeting uh, later on uh, this week, uh, then I think we have a chance to secure the economic and the social benefits that making changes in this rather forgotten area uh, would bring. So thank you very much for listening. And if you'd like to, to learn more, just please click on the link that's attached to this message. Thank you.